Hello and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Excited to get back into the Word with you again this evening. And tonight we are back in Hebrews 11, uh, picking up with verse number 7. And uh, we're kind of skipping over Enoch there in verse 5. We covered that in our Power of a Personal Testimony series. So if you're interested in that, you can go back and watch that series of videos on our YouTube channel. It's on our Facebook as well. But tonight we are looking at uh, the faith of Noah. So We are uh, being encouraged through Hebrews 11 uh, that although there are issues out there that we face uh, as the children of God, we are equipped to handle those things through faith. And so here we have in Hebrews 11 a whole list of people that uh, obeyed God and because of their faith and because they obeyed him, uh, they were able to have victory in uh, many of the same areas that we face. So uh, Hebrews 11 and verse number seven there with Noah, let's have a word of prayer. And then we'll read that passage of scripture together. Uh, Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to study it together. Pray that you would uh, open our eyes to the truth of your word and Lord, equip us with faith. Uh, I pray that we'd see the similarities between Noah's world and our world. And we'd have a desire to know you, follow you, serve you. And uh, Lord, uh, to do that uh, by faith. Bless us now in Jesus name. Amen. I do want to encourage you, if you're able, come join us 7 p.m. here at Harbor Light Baptist Church, uh, Wednesday night prayer meeting and Bible study, and time to uh, share some of those prayer requests, pray with one another, and so uh, send your prayer requests in. We'd love to pray for you, uh, but let me encourage you, if you're able, to join us for that in-person uh, prayer meeting here at Harbor Light Baptist Church at 7. All right, let's pull up the scripture for this evening, Hebrews 11 and verse number 7 where it says this, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. All right, so we see our introduction here tonight. We are looking at Noah. Uh, As always, we've seen in the word of God that those that know God, those that have a relationship, those that Uh, find grace or favor, uh, as uh, Genesis um, uh, chapter 6 says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, They are those that have accepted God's word by faith, and so it is uh, by faith. It's, it's, It's their belief and trust in the promises of God. That's what saves someone. It's always been that way. It always will be that way. That faith is what saves. And so we see that here again with with Noah. Uh, And that because of Noah's faith, uh, the Lord saved him physically, but also uh, he was uh, saved eternally just as Abel that we looked at last week was. So the way we've uh, structured um, our Wednesday night studies is looking at a specific issue Uh, that the person mentioned is facing and I think we'll find similarities for ourselves in some of those issues as well and then um, looking at what God says about that issue and then faith and how faith responds to God's word all right so we're going to look at certain issues we're going to see God's word about those issues and then faith's response to those issues and uh, what the Lord does in that so what issue do we see here with Noah all right what issue do we see here with Noah all right Uh, Well, you'll notice that it says that he was warned of God there in Hebrews chapter 11, or chapter 11, verse number 7. So we see that what Noah was facing is that judgment was coming. Uh, Here we are not very far removed from Adam and Eve, from the garden, from Cain and Abel. In fact, many of the people here in the early chapters of Genesis, their lives overlap very much. Uh, But we see that judgment is is coming. Um, if you want some background information, we're not going to look at this uh, a lot of this tonight, uh, but read Genesis chapter 6 through Genesis chapter 9. But I do want to share a few things with you. And one of those is verses 5 through uh, 5 through 7 in Genesis chapter 6, where it says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. 
And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. And so we see that judgment is coming, all right? Um, Noah was warned of God, according to Hebrews 11, verse number 7. And we, we see that he lived in a very wicked world, and God was going to judge that world, okay? Uh, the people in Noah's day are without excuse. Again, they're, they're not far removed from Adam and Eve. Some of them um, probably knew Adam and Eve and certainly um, had heard their their testimonies and their stories and and uh, only a, a very very few generations away uh, from what had happened there with Cain and Abel and from Cain um, moving through life with whatever that mark of uh, that God had put on him was and and showing God's judgment and and, and telling of sin and and uh, the need to to sacrifice to God and 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 for that being the way to have sins forgiven and so God has uh, his, his patient. He is long-suffering. Uh, he gives man, uh, uh, even after he decides to destroy man off the face of the earth, he still, according to Genesis 6-3, gives him 120 years um, to, uh, to turn from their sin, uh, but they won't. And so God prepares to judge the earth, okay? God prepares to judge the earth. Now, we see that issue, that judgment is coming, okay? What did God tell him to do? Because faith um, sees, encounters issues, encounters problems, goes to the word of God, sees what God says, believes what God says, and then obeys God. So uh, in response to this issue that judgment is coming, that, that God's patience has run out and he's about to pour his wrath uh, there out on the world in the form of a flood, what does God tell Noah to do, all right? And so we see, according to Hebrews 11, verse number seven, that God tells Noah to prepare an ark, okay? As he always does, God speaks into this situation. And whatever you're facing, all right? I'm not saying that God has specifically told you every little minute decision to make, but I know that in his word, uh, he gives us all wisdom that we need to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We are equipped uh, to handle the things of this earth or, or uh, the things of this world. We, we, we are uh, provided with what God thinks on the matter. And so God speaks into this situation. He tells Noah that there is a way for Noah and his family to be spared from the coming judgment. All right. God speaks into the situation and he tells Noah to prepare an ark. And uh, he does that in Hebrews 11 and verse number seven. Let me pull that back up here. Hebrews 11 and verse number seven. So back to our scripture here where he says, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared in ark. And God tells him in Genesis 6 and verse number 14, make thee an ark. And so uh, with that coming judgment, God speaks into the situation and tells Noah to prepare an ark. That's always what God does. He always speaks into the situation. He tells Noah to prepare an ark. God says that he will send a flood, and so Noah must obey and prepare in order to save himself and his family. And I, I notice that um, there are certain themes in the New Testament uh, as far as Noah's preparation, Noah building the ark, the story, true story of Noah. Uh, there are certain themes that seem to come out uh, a lot in this uh, story. Uh, Peter refers to it multiple times and uh, what comes out in here in the Hebrews and then in first and second Peter uh, is that uh, God is, is, is long suffering. Uh, God is good. He does not desire to judge, but in his holiness, he will judge. And so God desires for Noah. He tells Noah to prepare an ark so that his family will be saved. But he also tells Noah to do so publicly, okay? Now we have this uh, understanding that Noah's job was not only to save himself and his family, 
but also to show, publicly show, uh, the mercy of God, the righteousness of God, that coming judgment, but also to show that salvation that was available. God, in his mercy, gives man 120 years from the time he decides to destroy the world, that's in Genesis 6-3, until the flood. He gives him that amount of time to turn to him in repentance. Look what it says in 1 Peter 3 and verse number 20. 1 Peter 3 and verse number 20. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So God, in his mercy, held back that flood uh, for many, many years while, while the ark was being built uh, because he desired to, to save. He, he's a long suffering God. And look at 2 Peter. In verse number, uh, chapter two and verse number five, look at what Peter says about Noah. It says, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world, the ungodly. So God will judge. He is going to judge sin. Uh, judgment is coming, but he tells Noah to prepare an ark and to do that publicly. God desires to win these uh, souls to him. He gives them an opportunity in his long suffering for them to come uh, to him and, and have that mercy. All right. So we see the issue that judgment is coming. What does God say? Okay. Uh, what does God say? Let's, let's bring that back up. Okay. God says judgment is coming. And what does he call Noah to do? He calls Noah in response to that judgment to prepare for that coming judgment and to preach about that coming judgment. Okay, uh, So we see the issue. Uh, we see what God has said about the issue. Okay, So just like with Cain and Abel. Uh, there's the issue of sin. What does God say? God says there must be a sacrifice. What does he say with Noah? All right, Noah, judgment is coming. You must prepare and preach that coming. You must prepare for and preach about that coming judgment. And so what we're interested tonight is seeing, okay, what is faith's response to that coming judgment? Okay, well, uh, what we see in Hebrews 11 and verse 7, what we see in Genesis chapter 6 through 9, is that Noah had the response of faith, and so should you. Noah had the response of faith, and so should you. So what does that response of faith look like? All right, let's look at Noah first of all. Okay, let's look at Noah first of all, and then we'll look at some things concerning us. First of all, Noah heard God. Now, the Bible says in Genesis that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And if we've established anything in Hebrews, it's that to know God uh, is to know him through faith. All right, It's never by works that we're saved. It's always through faith. And I believe what we see with Noah is that Noah, uh, at uh, the time uh, once Methuselah finally passed away, is that Noah and his family were uh, really the only ones upon the face of the earth that, uh, that were uh, still hearing God. God. Uh, they had continued that system of sacrifice that was with Cain and Abel, and uh, they continued to look to God uh, to provide mercy and to save them. They looked to him in faith to do that. And so there's always a remnant, and Noah is a part of that remnant. He hears the word of God. This uh, began uh, before Genesis chapter 6, but it continues in Genesis chapter 6. And so when God tells him that there is going to be a flood, okay, Noah continues that pattern of hearing God and believing God. Noah believed what God said about sin previously. Noah believes what God says about this coming judgment right now. Now it says in Hebrews 11 and verse number 7 that uh, God warned Noah of things not seen as yet. And so Noah here must exercise faith. He has heard God, but now he must exercise faith. Again, faith is a belief. It's a confident belief in the promises of God. It's believing and accepting those promises. So Noah hears from God what will happen. Now Noah must believe what God has said. This is the response of faith. Faith believes and accepts as true the things that God says, even though 
we have not seen those things for ourselves. So what are some things that Noah has not seen? Noah hears the words of God uh, that there is coming judgment, and now Noah has to believe God. Well, it seems there's a possibility that it had not yet rained. And so God is telling Noah that he's going to send this, this flood, uh, that it will rain upon the earth. Uh, but what we see in Genesis 2.6 is that uh, the, the ground was watered by a, by a mist, now, there's not anything that tells us necessarily that that is how things had continued until Noah's day, but uh, I think when you see the cataclysmic results of the flood, um, that the change to the way things are now uh, probably began in Noah's flood. And so Noah has to believe that God is going to send rain. Uh, Noah has to believe that God is going to send a worldwide flood. This has never happened before, but Noah must believe and accept this. Uh, Noah has to believe uh, that, um, that uh, he must build a boat of epic proportions. Uh, this, this is a boat the size of which uh, we will not see until the modern day, until quite, uh, quite recently, until the advent of steel. Not until then do you see a boat of the size of the ark and really not, not even much of a boat, okay? Uh, that word ark that uh, is used here is really just the idea of a box. God tells him, build this big box, cover it with pitch, and I'm gonna use that to save you. Noah has to accept and believe what God is saying to him. Uh, to accept that time frame of many, many years of building. Uh, Noah and his three sons and their families, uh, their wives, they were going to enter into the ark and uh, they believed, and they would begin working on it. Um, I, I think it's probably the case that they maybe hired others to work uh, with them and to help them. Uh, this is a monumental project that took many years, and Noah had to believe in a faithful way where he did that and believed for many years years. But what we see with Noah is that this is a response of faith because he hears what God says. And even though he's not yet experienced these things for himself, he believes God. And so then he obeys God. All right. That's, that's where faith, that's where we know we have faith when we hear, believe, and then obey. True faith acts on the commands of God that it has believed. And so Noah did obey God by building the ark. And in building the ark, he publicly declared God's coming judgment and that offer of God for salvation. When you look at those references in 1 Peter and 2 Peter, it seems that the expectation there is that God was extending another merciful opportunity for the world to enter into the ark. That those that heard the preaching of Noah, that saw his crazy lifestyle, that he was building an ark. Can you imagine this? He's building this giant box and he says it's going to rain gone through that public declaration that was Noah's life. Uh, he was... Um, and proclaiming the salvation that was available there in the ark. And so Noah shows the faith response of hearing, believing, and obeying. Uh, that although Noah had not seen the kind of judgment that God said was coming, he believed it, and so he did the things that God said were necessary to save himself and his family from that judgment and to declare to the world around him the things that were necessary for the world to be saved from that coming judgment. Now, what does that have to do with you and me? Because Hebrews 11 is... Um, it is a uh, example for us, uh, not only of what faith is, but I think of all the variety, all the kinds of things that faith uh, will help us, those issues that faith will help us to address. And so we've seen Noah, but what about you and me? Hebrews 11 says that uh, Noah was warned of things not seen as yet. And so I want to think about what kind of things are we being called to believe, all right? Uh, well, we are called to believe that judgment is coming, okay? God has told us that judgment is coming, and he has told us exactly how to prepare. Now, he does not call for us to prepare by building an ark, 
but he does call us to prepare by putting faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? And so you and I must be saved. That is the response of faith. God's judgment is coming, but those who are in Christ will be saved. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23. It says there, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you see those elements there? Coming judgment, the wages of sin is death. Sin must be paid for. What is death? Well, death is separation from God. How long does that last? Well, since we are created to live forever, it will last forever. But, look at that, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord our Lord. And so God called Noah to build an ark and to get inside of it. He calls us to put our faith in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for salvation. And so what is the response of faith to coming judgment? It is a trust in Jesus for salvation. But I think with what we see in Hebrews 11 of Noah, that that is not all of the response of faith to coming judgment but that not only will we trust Jesus for salvation, we will publicly build an ark. We will publicly declare that God's judgment is coming. Now, the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And I'm not sure all of what Noah said, Uh, He must have been talking about God's coming judgment and that God would send a flood to destroy the world. I'm not sure of all that he said, but we do know that he declared the judgment of God, the coming judgment of God, by what he did. He lived a life in obedience to God. Noah's world was without excuse. Peter is clear about that. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, and his example left those around him without excuse. But I wonder uh, if you and I are having that same kind of ministry to those around us. Have we shown obedience to God and thereby condemned the world? Now, that doesn't mean we look at the world and we say, you are condemned, (laughs) but we do live in such a way that we tell of and we show the coming judgment of God. We show that we are preparing for eternity, that we are strangers and pilgrims in this land. What was Noah showing with that ark? He was showing that uh, there were some drastic things that were coming and he was living totally different than everybody else in preparation for that coming judgment. You and I are called to that same kind of ministry. The judgment of God is coming. Will we show that by building our own ark, by living for God, by living that changed life, by living uh, as new creatures in Christ? And I know that that can be very frustrating, as I am sure it was frustrating for Noah and his family to be the only ones who believed, and to be the only ones who are there in the ark. And I I know there are times when we feel that kind of pressure. But let me encourage you, lastly, to leave that judgment with God. Uh, God does not instruct us to try to force anyone into the ark. Uh, The only thing that we can do is to accept God's word and declare it. Uh, I think we live in a day and age much like what Noah lived in. Uh, that there is wickedness all around us. And we know from the scriptures that there is coming judgment. What do we do in response to that? Uh, Do we try to legislate morality? Now, I'm all for good laws. I am all for biblical laws. But let me tell you, that is not going to make your life easier or better as a Christian, and it doesn't get anyone into heaven, all right? Uh, You and I, we must declare the safety that is in the ark, the safety, the salvation that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And although sometimes that is frustrating, we need to let God uh, leave, uh, leave the judgment in God's hands. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And again, there are ways that a Christian ought to live. Uh, There are things that a Christian ought to do. Uh, But we can be very frustrated when we try to use the world's methods 
uh, to bring about salvation. God says, live for me in this present world. Declare that I am coming back. Declare that I will come and melt the earth and the elements with fervent heat. Declare that coming judgment. Live for me. Put your faith in Jesus and display that to those that are around you. Let them see that. And uh, what a shame it would be if uh, we, we declared, well, if there are certain laws that are passed, then, then the world will be okay. No, God's judgment will still come upon the world. And so we must declare uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so Christian, uh, don't be frustrated. Uh, live for God. Um, publicly proclaim uh, the, uh, the, the truths of God's word. P- publicly proclaim that salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ and then uh, live for him boldly and publicly just as Noah publicly built that ark. And uh, although Noah doesn't have much fruit, his family's there in the ark with him. What a blessing it is. And he sets that example for us that we continue to look at of uh, how to respond with faith to God's coming judgment. We expect it, but we're prepared and we warn others with our godly life and with our godly words. Uh, let's um, seek to live for God just as Noah did. Uh, Noah's faith, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared in ark. All right, are you ready for God to come back? And are you telling others how they can be ready for Christ's return? All right, I want to encourage you again to come out and join us for in-person Bible study, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Sunday mornings at 1030 for our worship time. Uh, We'd love to meet you, love to see you there. If these online uh, studies have been a blessing to you, I want to invite you out. If we can pray for you anyway, please leave a prayer request uh, in the comments or send us a message. And let me have just a short word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you for the opportunity to see the faith that Noah had. And Lord, I know that he was a sinner just like the rest of us. He needed salvation. And so I'm thankful that he had faith in you and uh, that that faith in you is what saved him. Uh, Lord, thank you for warning us of the coming judgment. And I pray that we would be ready to live for you to accept uh, what you have said about our sin and about how our sin can be paid for in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that we would be warning others, both with our words, but also with our life, that we would be building an ark in our own lives and would be showing uh, with our actions that we are prepared for your return. Uh, Bless us now as we seek to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time, and uh, stay in the Word. Bye-bye.